Hey everyone, thank you so much for having me for your virtual career day. My name is Dr. Christopher Kalix. I'm currently a radiology resident physician in Philadelphia. A little bit about myself, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. I moved down to high school in Florida, went to Florida State University for undergrad, Duke University for medical school, and now I'm currently in my radiology residency training. So to start off, why should you work towards being a radiologist? I think it takes a lot of effort, but the effort is well worth it. And to start, I'd like to tell a brief history of medicine. It starts off on the continent of Africa, in the land of Kemet, or Egypt as the Greeks renamed it, with a man by the name of Emotep. He was the oldest physician in recorded human history. And around the year 2700 BC, he was not only a physician, but an architect, a polymath, and a true scientist. His accomplishments were revered in the ancient world, and he was actually turned into a god in Greece by the name of Asclepius, here closest to Emotep, and by the Romans, the god Hermes of medicine, here to the right. And this accomplishment still resonates to this day. This is me graduating medical school with the staff of Asclepius and the medical corpse seal with the staff of Hermes, all representing the scientific foundation that was laid by Emotep. Fast forward to 1865, Sir Wilhelm Rankin was a German physicist, and in his basement, he was studying cathodes and electrons, and he realized at certain frequencies, electrons can penetrate solid substances, but it, they can't penetrate other substances such as bone. So these x-rays were able to penetrate anything, anything solid, but bone, and his wife put her hand behind the film and recorded the first x-ray here with her engagement ring on, and the rest is essentially history. So what does a radiologist do? We're medical doctors that specialize in diagnosing, treating injuries and diseases, using medical procedures, such as x-rays, computer tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, nuclear medicine, and ultrasound. So for the first imaging modality in x-ray, this is our basic imaging modality. And if a patient came in with this film, I'd have to immediately call the emergency medicine physician in the emergency room to intervene because it's a subtle finding, but an important one. This is a patient's lung lining, and all the rest of this is air, which we call the pneumothorax. We would have to intervene by putting a chest tube here and re-expanding the patient's lung and saving a patient's life. Another imaging modality is computer tomography, which is essentially a three-dimensional x-ray. This is me reading images in the reading room, and this is a, a head CT. And if a patient got in an accident and hit their head, they may bleed. And this brighter area here is blood and a neurosurgeon has to intervene immediately to save that patient's life. Another imaging modality is an abdominal CT. And if a patient comes in with the right lower quadrant pain, they can possibly have appendicitis, which a general surgeon has to intervene on. I make the diagnosis and call the general surgery team. Another uh, example is of a pelvis fracture after an accident, we can actually make a 3D reconstruction of this pelvis, call the team that ordered this study about their patient so they can call the orthopedic surgeon to intervene immediately. Another imaging modality is magnetic resonance imaging, which utilizes the fact that different parts of our body have different amounts of hydrogen. So a high level magnet shoots into our body and depending on the part of the body, the hydrogens flip at different frequencies and respond to different signals. For an example, the bone has a different signal than muscle and has a different signal than fat. And we use this a lot in sports imagery and spinal imaging. Another imaging modality is ultrasound. And this is a, a pregnant woman with her child inside her womb. And we're able to use sound waves and different substances of the body return different echoes to the transducer probe. For an example, air doesn't produce any echo, so it's hypoechoic, and the skin produces an echo, so it's hyperechoic. Breast mammography, which is near and dear to my heart, is essentially a high-powered x-ray, and women at the age of about 40 start getting annual mammography screenings for breast cancer, and here we'd get a breast imaging study, talk to the patient, and if we do need to intervene, we do an image-guided breast biopsy to send off the, the pathologist to see if it's cancerous. And this is me practicing breast 
guided biopsies in a breast imaging conference. And another imaging modality is nuclear medicine. And we actually use radionuclear tracers that attach to certain substances such as glucose or sugar. And in cancer studies, cancer cells are hypermetabolic, so they're using much more glucose than the average cell. And that radionucleotide emits gamma rays that we're able to detect, detect. And we can now see where the cancer is growing or see where the injury is in the body. Another specialty in radiology is interventional radiology. And this specialty is a little more hands-on. You're in the operating room. You actually use guided wires minimally invasively to, for an example, take out a clot in the patient's brain. And here there's a clot and you can put in a coil or remove the clot. Or if the patient intra-abdominally has a clot in one of their kidney vessels, you can go through the groin and retrieve that clot and really do life-saving procedures in the operating room. Now that we know all the specialties, we'll talk about the salary and the lifestyle of a radiologist. For a diagnostic radiologist, the average salary is about 420,000 per year. Diagnostics is more sitting in the reading room, diagnosing patients, talking to clinicians over the phone, and maybe doing minimally invasive procedures such as what you would do in mammography. The hours tend to be about 8 a.m. I get into work and you leave for about 5 or 5.30 when the work is done. The call schedule is pretty scheduled either a weekend or nighttime, except for mammography, which tends to be a little lighter on call. You don't work weekends and you don't work as many nights. The other specialty, interventional radiology, because it's more procedural based, you get paid a little bit more. The average salary is about 610000 per year. The hours are a little longer, about 6.30 a.m. to 5 or 6. And the call in the schedule is very variable depending on what patients need and how many times you get called in. So to move on to what's the journey like and what does it take to become a radiologist, first, after high school, you go to your undergraduate studies. This is should be some of the best times of your life. You can major in anything. I personally majored in psychology and neuroscience. As long as you complete the prerequisites, which are the courses required to get into medical school, such as biology, psychology, chemistry, physics, biochemistry, you want to keep a GPA of about 3.6 or higher. And it's important to know to be very well-rounded and enjoy. So as long as you're able to keep about a 3.6 and higher, you should really be well-rounded because medical schools actually enjoy that as an applicant that you're able to balance schoolwork and still have a life outside of medicine and academics. Once you get into medical school, you have leaped the biggest hurdle and you have arrived. Now it's all downhill. You do four years of medical school, you pass the United States Medical Licensing Exam, and then you choose a specialty, or I like to call it a superpower, because it's really a craft that you're gonna pour the rest of your career in to become a master and to help patients as much as possible. Then you graduate and your name changes forever and your doctor, your last name. Now you're in radiology residency. You do an intern year of general medicine, surgery, or a transitional year, and then you do four years of radiology training. After your four years, you can do a one-year fellowship and further subspecialize in either abdominal imaging, neuroradiology, bone and joint imaging, or musculoskeletal imaging, interventional radiology, or breast mammography, and other specialties. I know what you're thinking at this point, by the time you're done with this 14 years of school, you may feel like a Jedi Knight. This is Mace Windu, if you guys are not familiar with Star Wars. But I put this picture up because you guys should take pride in this journey because at the end, you will be a sort of a Jedi with your specialty or superpower and you'll really be able to make a huge impact on patients. It's a long word, but I think it's very much worth it. Radiologists tend to rank the happiest amongst specialists and are some of the highest paid medical specialists. It's not all about the money, but it is about happiness. And if you're gonna take 14 years after high school, it's good to know that the people that took that path tend to be generally happy with their decision. So that's the end of my presentation. My contact information, I'm Dr. Christopher Calix. My Twitter handle is at ChrisCalixMD, and my email is ccalix4 at gmail.com if you have any questions. Thank you for your time and attention, and good luck.